Um, so my phone works really well. My laptop is another story. Um, just trying to get the internet to work on it is just like, it just doesn't want to. If it could talk, it would say, I don't want to. So what I'm doing is I'm going to share this link to share the link. I'm going to share it. Now my laptop is my secondary device and my phone is my primary device. So that's wonderful. I don't dare go out of it on the phone. Let's see. Just looking to see what the other color options are. Ooh, bubbles. Ooh, wow. Old tiny movie. Ooh. Ah! That was squeaky. This is squeaky too. Okay, me no play with that no more. That's not too bad. Hmm. Yeah, we'll probably stick with that. That's probably fine. So now I've got to go to Facebook and um, share this link. So tonight we're going to be talking about all kinds of different things. All kinds of different things. And it's a good thing I didn't share the heck out of that link because... Not actually using it because of the um, the computer and its internet connection. So what I want to do is I want to take a, um, a networking cable with Ethernet, run it all up down this wall out the room to the living room, hook it up to the, uh, the internet box out there, and hopefully that will help. But it's not fun not fun at all. I might have to keep up with the live chat on here because I don't think I can do it on my phone while I'm streaming, but I have to stream from my phone because my laptop is just doing that thing again, and it's super annoying. Nobody's going to want to watch that, that's for sure. Oh, boy. So what I'm going to do... Going to delete this. Of course, it's not letting me. Piece of garbage. So I'm live anyways, and I don't really want this to go over two hours, so we'll have to get started shortly, but right now I have to take the description of this stream and make it so that it is the description of the failed stream. 
So copy all that. And then we'll go back. Does this pretty okay? Come on. There. All right, world religion because the um, the phone only allowed me sixty characters. And I think I put a comma after Queens. I kind of had to take that out. Save. Okay. Now, I'm going to need a shareable link. I think I already have that. Facebook has taken a while. I'm surprised that nobody's actually seen the um, the notification go out from YouTube for this because um usually that just kind of takes care takes care of itself. Um, I don't have a phone phone tripod that I can really put this on. This kind of sort of I don't know. This has worked a lot better other times because I haven't had to do this on the phone, but with last time how it was, and then I just wanted to do the same thing this time, I think, and it wasn't, it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to work. Will I actually be able to use my M50 for something tonight? Oh, no such luck. Of course, I'm not ordering a phone holder, I'm ordering a tablet holder. Come on, MacGyver. Think. I have an idea. I do have a phone holder. My DeWalt speaker. <clears throat> Boy, look at Joseph. He must be loaded. He has a DeWalt speaker. I got it for like under 20 bucks. Not loaded. In any way, shape, or form. Oops. First stream failed. Here's the new one. Hey! So somebody's here, so I can talk to somebody. That's not bad at all. Or they're not having anybody to talk to, that's for sure. Um, and then I do also want to share this at least to uh, friends of Gail Ripplinger, and I don't want to go over to two hours tonight. That's why I started around 9.30 or so, but then it's like everything. <sighs> We're still trying to figure things out, guys. I even got a cable. Let me flip this around. If it'll let me. There. I even got a cable for my M50. So that actually hooks up. Um, I wasn't able to really get it to work tonight, but we got close. We got real close to getting it to work tonight, which was really nice. Um, but not close enough to be able to do it. And that was what I, that's what, some of what I was doing after I got home, but most of it was with uh, Destiny and the kids and stuff like that. So and tonight is the first night 
if you are not subscribed, um, if you want, if you want to chat in the group chat here on the on the live stream, you will have to subscribe. Um, I put for any amount of time, so it's not like you have to be subscribed for a week or a day or five minutes even. Um, you should just be able to hit subscribe and then be able to comment. Um, so yeah. We're live. Post. All right, so at least it's going to go to the Friends of the Network Linger group. Wow, four people. Thank you very much for showing up. I appreciate it. More than you can stand. Okay, there we go. All right, so like I said, tonight is a subscriber-only chat. Um, I, I kind of do that because it kind of helps with trolls and things. So... That way, hopefully, we can avoid some of that kind of nonsense. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to mute this. And then back. And then... Oh, come now. Or channel. Okay. So, we're going to be tackling a weird subject tonight. You might think, how weird can it be to talk about King James and defend him from the people that like to claim that he was a homosexual? How weird can that get? Well, it can get kind of weird. Um, so, I was listening to on the way home, just to kind of get ready for this, a video that I posted in uh, the community part of the um, of our YouTube channel. So when you go to our main YouTube channel page and hit the community tab, home videos, home videos, shorts, live, playlists, community. If you go to the community tab, there's a post that I made four hours ago today called, um, I, I say I am listening to this as I prepare for tonight's live stream, and it's called The Real Story of King James by Dr. Phil Stringer. Um, and I know that sometimes he doesn't have some good stuff, and other times he does have some really good stuff, so, you know, um, especially Ripplinger fans are divided on Phil Stringer, but he does do a good job um, defending King James and uh, talking about how he was not a homosexual and how it's dem demonstrable from history. And it's absolutely not true. So um, you guys can tune into that anytime you feel like it. Um, so let me see. I'm going to put this as far back probably as I can. And then try to put... Or no, hang on. If I put my speaker behind it on top of the keyboard, and I do... Ooh, that's not going to work. Ooh, that's not going to work either.
trying to MacGyver things does not always work the best. But, you know, when you have a live stream to do and you're trying to use a new device that you don't usually use, then you got to put your uh, debit card behind the phone and make it stay. So it worked a little bit. Um, also, technology-wise, um, I'm going to have to um, put the... Uh, uh, I'm actually going to have to send the Anchor dongle back. Because apparently, uh, my laptop, in order to work with two screens, needs to have a, um, what do they call it again? I forget what they're called. But they're like, they're like a super, a super hub, thing, a, a dock, possibly, I think they're called a dock. Um, and I think mine needs a dock, and a dock that would work with mine is over $200, and I can't afford that. So... The two monitors thing is going out the window. Um, I only have about, had about $90 to work with for this whole thing um, from the uh, income tax return. And um, so what I did is I ordered a different dongle. I'm gonna get my money back on this one. Um, um, a different dongle that's going to have a, less features um it was only about forty dollars and uh, it's not actually going to work with screens it's going to have one hdmi instead of a, uh, a display port in an hdmi like this one has because it just won't work with two screens um i won't even work with one screen the screen i was trying to try it on it was like not not even not even a thing not even close um so yeah and um, so that's going back, and I'm going to get, I've already ordered it. It's a stand kind of thing for tablets that are about the same size as mine. They're like 14 to, I think, 4 to 14 or something like that. Um, so like a phone to a 14-inch uh, tablet. And I believe mine is a 13 and a half, so it should fit. If it doesn't fit, I'm going to send it back and try to find another one, but we'll see. Um, but that is the best that I'm going to be able to do for that end of things. Hey, Charles. Yeah, work, work, work. You poor guy. Do you ever get a break? Do you take your work home with you? Please don't do that. You're probably, you're probably still at work, though. And you're just like, I wish I could go home. I understand. Um. So, yeah. I don't want to do too much chit-chatting. Um, maybe at some point we could do um two live streams or do one ha one hour you know uh public and then the other one private or something like that with just the uh the messenger chat which you guys can have messenger without having facebook so that would be a possibility for people that actually want to join like that um i would also like to at some point we have to nail this one down first. Um, I really want to get the M50 fired up and uh, have it actually be able to work and have it all streamlined and everything and not have to worry about all the other little nonsense issues. Um, and uh, then eventually do a, um, a Patreon-only stream to kind of help encourage people to maybe consider $1 a month um, for the, the, the Patreon subscription. Um, I, I actually, I don't know if $1 a month gets that benefit. I'm not, I don't remember. I've checked, um, either that, or I could do it with, um, buy me a coffee or something like that, which I think the minimum might be five, but I don't remember. We'll see. We'll see. Just something that I would like to have for, um, people that are members only and actually be able to have like a, um, a round table kind of thing, I guess. Um, we'll figure that all out. Um, so yeah and they came out with a new piece of hardware for um the remarkable that i bought i bought this last year it was it was a lot of money but i think it was like i think it was like the only thing that i got with my um with the income tax thing but i don't I, I think I got it for like 700 something or whatever, but it has, it has been a fantastic tool and 
So yeah, anyways. Um, they came out with a keyboard for it, and I'm just like, wow, that's cool. So let me go to... Did I get to my channel? Yes, I did. Okay, so home. Live stream. And I am on mute. And I don't think it's going to affect... If, if, if you guys see me, like, stalling or freezing or anything like that, please let me know. Um, I think that that's only a problem with the computer. So it, hooking it up with an Ethernet cable might not help. And I'm trying to figure that out. So um, just uh, give me as much feedback as you guys think is a good idea. All right, so I can see the chats. And it looks good on my end, the video. Cool, cool, very cool. Um, so my phone apparently has superpowers, or my um, laptop does not. So yeah. And I'm going to put in a smiley face. All right. Ay, ay, ay. It gives me a little yellow crown on my thing. That's so silly. All righty. Let's see. Video scripts. Come on, scroll. Technology. It only works when you don't, you know, when you don't want it to. And it never works when it doesn't want to. And right now it is not scrolling or moving whatsoever. And that's where my notes are. That's super nice. So we're going to have to open up a new tab and go into the Remarkable app. And this is... I have never had a hard time scrolling on this thing before. It's worked fine all day. Everything is against me tonight. All right, so I'm going to go to Drive real quick and introduce you guys to the connections and why exactly I started this idea of a live stream. I've actually wanted to do this for a long time ever since I got the ever since I got this comment on my um the secret mission of the New King James Bible video. Ever since I did that video and I got that comment I was like, I want to do this. I don't think... I I, I left a, a reply to her comment yesterday, hoping that she would maybe be able to send me some more information about what she mentions, but... No such luck. Um... And I hope that um, um, Dana um, what's your name again? Burns? Diana or Dana Burns? I hope that you're, you were able to make it tonight. Because um, I know that um, um, what's her name? Jane Armstrong, I think. Same last name as me, which is cool. Um, she um wanted me to invite you, so I hope you're able to make it. Um, let's see. So I've got to go to video ideas. And it's a screen capture.
think this is it. Okay, so here's what it says. Really weird. Update installed and tap to restart. I don't want to restart it right now. I'm in the middle of the live stream. Leave me alone, update. But I guess I have to run the update. Because it won't do anything without me updating it, apparently. So that means I won't be able to read about the update features. <laughs> Guys, don't worry. You may think that oh, we're so comfortable and happy and everything is so easy with technology. You ever have to fight with technology for months to accomplish one thing? My great uncle used to say that every bolt is a project and anybody that's ever worked on machines or anybody that's ever worked, worked on anything knows that especially if something is a rusted bolt, that could take you a couple of days depending on the on where it is and just... All sorts of things. Okay, so something about phones. Cut and paste type notes. I like that. Because you'll have to have that if you're going to have a keyboard with it. Send text as email. Cool. Lost and found. Please return label to the bottom of the sleep screen. Interesting. I will have to activate that because I've been worried about losing my remarkable for a while. Better zoom. That sounds like fun. So yeah, I'll have to read about the other updates at some point. That's really cool. Get back. And then I need to go to video scripts. Now it scrolls like a dream. Updates. You always got to install an update to get anything to work. Okay, so Dana Waldrop left a comment. This was a while ago. Um, and she said, uh, thank you for your work. And I heard of that comment. And then she said, I think if you simply work toward a slow awakening of the masses, you'll do great, exclamation mark. Okay. Um, the truth about the new Bibles will come out eventually and people will be devastated. Probably. They'll need these videos to help make sense of it all. Yeah, well, hopefully that, you know, hopefully uh, these videos are for people, will be here for people in the future. That That is something to, to look toward, I believe. I am also worried about the hidden books of the Bible they found underneath the Vatican. I haven't heard about that. I would like to know which hidden books of the Bible they were personally. I would, I would want to know that. And so, we're going to try to get a little bit into the issue of canon tonight. Um, we have an hour and a half to be able to do this. Five watchers, um, if you guys want to, uh, the other people that are on here, if you guys end up liking this video, um, if you're getting something out of it so far, um, consider hitting the like button. That does help us with the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. And remember that the best two ways that you can help this channel for free is with your prayers and with your shares. Um, because sharing the video helps more people see it that will be interested, and um, that helps us to be able to get to different milestones where YouTube gives us different features to where we'll be able to grow more. Um, I am also worried about the hidden books of the Bible they found underneath the Vatican. That'll be important later. 
Um, I thought it was a fake story for the long for the longest time, I assume she meant. Turns out it's real. Well, I mean, just because there's books found underneath the Vatican, I mean, Jack Chick was telling us about underground libraries under the Vatican for years through the uh, the Alberto series, so I wouldn't be surprised that there'd be a lot of di different books under there, but as far as the idea that Constantine or any pope determined what was in the canon, that would be true of things like the Apocrypha, but they did not establish the canon of the New Testament text especially not at the Council of Nicaea. We'll try to get into that later on. Um, if you guys know anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys know anybody who would be interested in hearing about those kind of things, um, anybody who's interested in the issue of canon or whatever, um, you guys can send this video. Um, there's a little arrow probably below this video that says something like share next to it. Um, that'll give you an option to share it to your social media platforms, or you can copy the link and you can paste it into messages or emails or whatever else. Um, so that's an option. Um, and you guys can also join our group chat if you look it up on, um, I think you can join it. Um, uh, our group chat on Messenger, it's called Bible Version, Bible Version Conspiracy Dash Update. Or updates. So you guys can look that up. Now, continuing the rest of her comment, this is where it starts getting back to King James. As you know, King James was under the Queen's rule, and the Queen was part of a cult, was part of the cult, part of the cult. Not sure how much of that will come out, though. So my comment at the time was, wow, it sounds like Francis Bacon's prophecy is coming true. I mentioned this in my video, Will Earthquakes Begin the New World Religion? I think it is also mentioned in the New Order of Barbarians tapes. I think it is mentioned in there. Um, do you have more information on this? It sounds like something that I need to make a video about as soon as I can. Thank you very much. And as far as I'm aware, she has never gotten back to that. I will go and double check right now, just to be sure. And uh, another thing, I wish that I had my, um, I wish I had that spot. For anybody that has this book, The New Order of Barbarians, um, if you're able to maybe thumb through it, especially in the uh, the religion section, possibly, um, which is around didn't I make any highlights or leave any notes or anything? That's what's the problem with uh, pristine copies of books. You never find the place you want. The churches will help us. That's around thirty-seven. Blending the religions. Heart attacks as a form of assassination. More time in schools, but they won't learn anything. Some books will, would just disappear from libraries. Anyways, different things. I'm not sure if there's... I'm, I'm positive that it was in there that um, talked about um, the earthquakes and the New World Religions. If not, if it's not in there, it might just be in the tapes. Um, I'm not sure. And I put a link down in the description of this video. We'll go through that probably later on. Um, um, a link for the the interviews with uh, Kelly McGinley and Barbara Aho or Aho um, about uh, Francis Bacon and the King James Bible, and it kind of dropped off at the end where she just had like nothing good to say. Um, 
about the idea of uh, uh, Shakespeare being in Psalms and stuff like that. But we will get to that. <clears throat> Secret mission of the NKJV. Sharknado. Yes, I believe this is a struggle for many when they learn the truths that might turn people away from the word. I know that the KJV is not perfect. So this is this is Dana. I know that the KJV is not perfect, but this, uh, but it's what we've got, and it includes enough truth for me to be guided by studying it. Others are not as open-minded and will completely turn away frowny face. So that was a comment that was there. That's one that I haven't responded to, so let me remove the I haven't responded filter. Oh, do 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 the droplets, do do do. Thank you for your work. And I said, you are welcome. Please make sure you have just subscribed, as we are planning to come out with some more often stuff before New Year's. If there is anything that you think we should make a video about, please let me know. Um, I think you're so, okay, slowly awaken the masses, blah, blah, blah. Um, I thought it was a fake story for the longest. Um, turns out it was real. As you know, King James was under the queen's rule and the queen was part of the cult. I mean, maybe it works that way in chess. Where the uh, queen is the ruler, but. Three months ago, she left a comment responding to Sharknado and William Robertson, and that was it. So anyways, she hasn't gotten back to me on that, and she still hasn't gotten back to me on that. <clears throat> I wasn't able to find anything about, I guess, Queen James being in the cult, um, which I'm assuming is like, you know, the, the cabal or, or the, um, you know, the British royal stuff, who knows. Um, I still got to figure out the Streamlabs thing, um, Albert, <clears throat> we will see, we will see. It's going to take me a, a few months to probably get this live stream thing nailed down the way that I want to. But in the meantime, we need to start before we are ready. And that's what we're doing right now. Your first will always be your worst. Just to let you guys know. When you guys first start taking pictures because you want to pursue the uh, hobby or um, pursue, uh, you know, freelancing or whatever as a photographer or a designer or a um, uh, birdhouse builder on Etsy or whatever, who knows, you know, whatever, whatever you do uh, where you're making things, um, your first are always your worst. And if you're not ashamed of what you started with, you started too late. All right, so the claim is, is that King James was under Queen James's authority. I don't think so. I don't know of any evidence of that from history. If you guys want to send anything my way regarding that, that's absolutely fine. I know that he was devastated by her passing, which she did die before him. Um, but yeah. 
let's see. So will earthquakes begin the new world religion? I uh, posted this video as well. It's down in the description. And uh, in that video, I think it was Francis Bacon. But I don't, I don't remember if it was him or if it was in here. I'll have to look into that. I'm pretty sure it, in, in the video that I made, will uh, earthquakes begin the new world religion? I did mention the new order of barbarians. I did not mention the, uh, the connection with um, Francis Bacon. So I'm assuming that my comment, maybe either they said the same thing or something like that. I'm not sure. But the idea is, is that documents will be unearthed. You know, new startling finds. Look at what we've just uncovered from the dustbin of uh, history. And uh, I was drawing the connection between these earthquakes that are supposed to split the rocks or whatever. And, you know, we're going to find these ancient scrolls that are going to completely revolutionize, you know, religion and stuff like that. Nag Hammadi. Sounds about right with the New Age and stuff like this. Um, I don't know that there was necessarily an earthquake. Um, and also the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls actually have a lot of good in them, I think. Um, we can talk about that on another live stream. Um, once I've uh, learned a little bit more about those kind of things. I do want to subscribe to Audible at some point. I think it's like $14 a month, but I definitely want to be able to listen to the Ken Johnson books a little more frequently because I am an audio learner. I list, I, I learn by listening. Um, so yeah, these documents that are supposed to be unearthed are supposed to help usher in the new world religion. And uh, I was like, huh, that sounds an awful lot like in the 1800s where, oh, wow, we're finding all these new manuscripts that are changing what we think about the Bible and stuff like this. Hmm. That was about 100 years ago. It seems like about every 50 years or so, they make some big manuscript find. Then you have the Dead Sea Scrolls in the 40s and 50s, I think, or 60s. I forget, probably 40s and 50s. And, um... Then later on to today, I think we're getting due. And uh, there's secret documents found under the Vatican or whatever. You never know, especially from the news. There's so much nonsense. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so let's see. The New Order of Barbarians. I'm just going to take a quick look-see. See if I can locate the... Uh, the moment in question here. Cannon fodder by a hero. Watching you while you're watching your TV. 80s and 90s Grim Reaper. Music will get worse. Give us the young. For any of you that want to pick up this book, uh, sports for girls to de-emphasize femininity. This is back in the 68, I believe. World citizens, world sports, loss of jobs, loss of security, population shifts to eliminate traditions. Patriotism will go down the drain. To create a new structure, you have to tear down the old. The need for more jails and using hospitals as jails. That's interesting from page 40, 48. I put a link down in the description. Um, full disclosure, um, we, uh, we uh, need to make a qualified sale at some point. Um, I don't know what is not qualifying me for sales. I am putting down in the comment, like everybody else does, that there are affiliate links and such like that, but apparently it doesn't help. Um, I've got to look into that. There's all kinds of things I've got to make sure I've got straightened. Guys, before you embark 
on this mission of, you know, doing anything with the YouTube channel, please make sure that you actually want to do what you're going to do with your channel. Encouragement of drug abuse. Some books will just disappear from libraries. The Mandela Effect. No. Controlling who has access to information. Schools as the hub of the community. <laughs> More time in schools, but they won't learn anything. Churches will help us. Resurrecting education as a tool. Or re restructuring education as a tool of indoctrination. Changing the Bible through a vision of key words. We did a video about this um, a little while ago. It was called... Uh, Barbarian versions, I believe. Blending all religions. Old religions will have to go. Education is a tool for accelerating the onset of puberty and evolution. With regards to exercise, introducing or in, inducing heart attacks as a form of assassination. Suppressing cancer cures as a means of population control. New difficult to, di difficult to diagnose and untreatable diseases. Elimination of private doctors. Planning the control over medicine. Limited access to affordable medical care by eliminating elderly easier or makes eliminating elderly easier. Euthanasia and the demise pill. Families diminishes in, in importance. Encouraging homosexuality. Sex education is a tool of world government. All these different things. For those of you that don't know about what the uh, New Order of Barbarians is, you guys are more than welcome to watch that live stream. Um, it's basically where someone from the Order, apparently, spilled the beans to a group of doctors in the hopes that it would help them prepare for what's coming. And as he said, five years before he gave that speech, he um, couldn't have said that the New World religion that he was helping to plan would actually come to pass. But he said, it's coming so quickly now, there's no stopping it. And they do mention the Mark of the Beast in there as well. Very, very interesting read. And it's only like 100 or so pages. It's down in the description if you guys want to check that out. Okay. Um, in the Barbara Aho interviews, I think she mentions that. Um, okay, so before, I think in the second hour, we're probably going to uh, talk about the lost books part. And... Uh, the King James part. For now, though, I'm going to take you guys through the description. So if you're on a desktop or laptop or anything where you can pull up the description of the video, sometimes it'll say, um, when you look at underneath, it'll say um, something like five watching um, started streaming 48 minutes ago, ago was King James, a sodomite, blah, blah, blah. And then it'll say more. If you hit more, it'll open up all the rest of the description stuff. So I just want to kind of go through this to make you guys aware of what's actually down in the description. So videos. First one is the New Order of Barbarians playlist. It's four different tapes, four different long videos. Um, there is another version of it on YouTube that is a full four hours long. Um, I do want to break that up into... Um, chapters in that particular video, but 
there's so much work that I want to get done versus how much I can get done in a day. It's unfair. Um, for King and Cabal, the Barbara Aho interviews playlist, that is also four videos by Barbara Aho. They are long, and um, I think the first two are the only ones that are available on her website anymore. She's taken down parts three and part four. So, I she she told me that she's working on uh, rethinking her position on the involvement of Rosicrucians in the translation of the King James Bible. She's trying to figure that out still. But her old um, videos did not um, did not have that as a possibility. So we'll have to see what she comes out with, and um, we'll figure it out from there. And I gotta get a, maybe I can reach it, hang on. I gotta get a charging cord. I just, I just feel bad because I know that, you know, M50 is, you know, several hundred dollars, which I bought years ago and the cell phone payments. And I, I feel, I feel bad if I try to promote links where people can help us financially, but, you know, having, having three kids and another one on the way and it's it 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 is it is hard and at the end of a um after after the end of the budget where we get any kind of money to use on on things like you know windshield washer fluid even most of the time we can't even buy windshield washer fluid because we had to get an extra you know an extra light like something else and then our ten dollars for the next week is gone and i don't know anyways um but anything that you guys see that I bring up on the videos and stuff, just to tell you. And I know how uh, people in history and people around the world are still suffering and stuff like this. The tech that I have, I have bought as cheap as I can the first time. And then the second time I try to make it something that I can stick with. My bag, for example, um, I originally bought one for like 19 bucks and it worked for a, a while, but then I, I really needed an upgrade. And I was like, I need something that I can go into that I can stay in because I don't want to buy five or six more bags. So uh, I got the one that's back there with uh, all of the money that I had for, um, for Christmas. And uh, it's been a great bag and it's been very helpful and uh, it's, it's inspired me uh, to make other things in my life better, and it's been great. 10.30 alarm. But anyways. So. Um, for King and Cabal, uh, does King James matter in that one? He does matter, because somebody... Somebody one time said, and I don't want to remake the video right here, but one time somebody said, oh, King James didn't matter. He didn't translate it. He just authorized the translation of it or whatever. And it's like, yeah, you, you can you can say that. Um, if you are fully convinced that he was a homosexual, which we'll get into in a few minutes, and, uh, you know, you're just trying to react to it and try to say, oh, it doesn't actually matter. It does still kind of matter. <clears throat> And uh, I will also say that if he was a homosexual, if he was part of a cult, if anything like this, then given the information like in uh, King James Unjustly Accused and uh, King James's Bible and its translators and please, please, people like that, and in all of that word even, with all that being true of what King James said and did and what the pastors of his day thought about him and uh, 
all of the different things. If he was in a, a dark place secretly, that would be even more significant because he'd be hiding it purposefully. But I don't think that he was. And we're going to go into that in a minute. Um, the super, super secret mission. The secret mission of the NKJV. There's a link there for um, the YouTube video. And then Will Earthquakes Begin the New World Religion, which I have mentioned both of those already. Books. The New Order of Barbarians, a New World System. I highly recommend you pick up a, pic a uh, copy of that. King James's Bible and its Translators by Lawrence Vance. I have not read it yet, but I really want to just be able to read these things. Um, I've got an office job now where sometimes there's downtime and I can take a book with me. Um, I prefer reading on my remarkable tablet because it makes it so I don't have to carry the bulk. I can keep the notes. I can edit the notes. I can do whatever I want to with it. Um, share pages to email, save them to drive, whatever else. Um, malicious history and investigation into King James the Sixth of Scotland and the First of England and his place in the history of witch hunts by uh, Joe Casty. That might be a good one for you guys too. Um, if you guys have any insights on that one, let me know. He did. Um, I'm not sure if the guy really uh, references his work on uh, the demonology, but um, he uh, he was uh, big into that. So yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, King James VI of Scotland and first of England unjustly accused by Stephen A. Coston, C-O-S-T-O-N Sr., that I think you can get on Amazon for around 200 something dollars. I got this one, I think, for like $86 way back. Like probably 10 years ago or greater. Maybe 15 years ago. Um, and then he wrote another book, which I don't even know if is available anymore. If anybody has a copy of it, I'd love to get my hands on it. Um, King James... Uh, Six and first, innocent until proven guilty by Stephen A. Coston Sr. That is answering the charges that he persecuted Baptists. And then lastly, in awe of thy word, where Gail Ripplinger has, I think, two chapters, either that or one chapter, on uh, King James and his godly character. The first link is to the AV Publications page where you can purchase it, or there is an Amazon affiliate link there as well in case you guys want to add a the uh, one from Amazon to your already bulging Amazon account um, cart, so then you don't have to do shipping separate or whatever else. But I will say that the better price for the book itself is from Gale. So check it out. And then the support our channel and help us grow below. I want to go through those links real quick. Um, uh, the Buy Me a Book is where you guys can actually donate um, I think five dollars is the minimum, or you can do a, you know, five, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, um, or a custom amount. And uh, you guys can actually help us buy books. Um, you guys can help us buy tech. Um, there is a wish list there as well that you guys can click on. Um, different health health needs for our family. Um, different things that we need for our. Uh, our, uh, our other ministry card carrying Christians and also things that we need for this channel are on there. So you guys can check out that if you guys want to drop. I mean, if everybody that's subscribed to our YouTube channel, if everybody that watched this video dropped $5 on, uh, you know, one of those things, then uh, that would be huge. 400 times five. That, that'd be awesome. Um, also, there's a sale running for the next three days. Um, everything is 20% off at our Spreadshirt account, our uh, Spread Shop, which is the second link, BibleVersionConspiracy.MySpreadShop.com. And you guys can go there and you guys can buy yourself something awesome. You can buy something awesome for a friend. Um, we've got different designs there that you guys can put on everything from apron to stuffed bears to dog 
bandanas to mugs to shirts to hats to whatever water bottles <clears throat> and um you guys can fully customize them as well so you guys can add a note you can add your favorite bible or so you can do whatever you want to with them and um, we do get some kickback from that as well they handle all of the uh, all of the uh, uh project uh, all of the uh, product creation the uh, shipping the handling and returns and um, we just supply them with designs so um if you guys see anything that you like let us know anything you would like to see changed let us know anything that you would like to see us add in the way of designs please let me know as well um i can totally make new designs patreon I don't do a lot on our Patreon right now because I have no patrons for this uh, this channel. Um, I'm really slipping on the card carrying Christians ends of things. I am. Um, I really don't know. I I, I don't want to. I, I don't like chasing two rabbits at one time, and that's what I feel like I'm doing. I I feel like one of them has to give sooner or later. And right now, uh, card carrying Christians actually has some financial support um but the youtube channel is far more popular i don't know we'll see tip jar is the uh, excuse me um tip jar is the last thing um there's the card carrying christians link on um convert kit where you guys can add a donation if you don't want to have anything to do with PayPal, that's a good one. Um, you guys can donate whatever amount you choose. And then there's also a PayPal link in case you guys want to send any kind of uh, love offering for the, um, the, the, the stuff that we go through on this channel, I tell you what. Anyways, that's running through everything that is in the description down there. You guys can check it out. You guys can do with it what you will. So far, we have nothing that is not available to you unless you pay. So far, we have no paywalls. There is no content behind any walls yet, really. I do plan on adding them in the future. So if you want to get in on the ground floor of that, you guys can, um, you know, get in there. That guy used to be on Alex Jones a lot. Okay. Um, Albert, which guy was on Alex Jones a lot? Um, this guy, I'm assuming. I'm not sure who you mean. Um, okay. So, first, I kind of want to talk about the lost books thing. This is not a paid advertisement for Propel Water. Propel. All right. Lost books under the Vatican. How is the Vatican involved in black magic? Oh, boy. What a question to start off with. So, I would highly recommend that you guys pick up another book, which I didn't actually include in the description. I can include it, but I'll just waste more of your time. Um, so if you want to click the link, one of the links on your way to find this book that I'm going to mention, that would be super helpful um, if you're planning on buying it. Um, <clears throat> I would recommend... These two. The Gnostic Origins of Roman Catholicism and the Demonic Gospels. I have yet to go through the Demonic Gospels yet, but my wife has read um, the Gnostic Origins of Roman Catholicism to me as we uh, drive, and it's very interesting. Um, just about everything that sets Christians and Catholics apart was identified by uh, Roman Catholic saints from the first two centuries which were actually just Bible-believing Christians before the Vatican could kill them. Um, and each one of those people did, uh, um, uh, 
labeled and identified each of these heresies as Gnostic heresies. So you have Gnosticism coming up in your Roman Catholic Church, your doctrines of purgatory, um, the uh, perfection of Mary, the host, the sacraments, stuff like this. Baptism of infants, I believe, was in there as well. There's a whole a whole list of these different things. And uh, there was one point in uh, the Pope's history where I've got to undo this top button. I'm sorry. There was one point very early on where the Pope was actually inviting everybody that was considered to be a heretic by the local churches to come to Rome to uh, be part of what he was doing there. That was interesting to hear. Um, and of course, for those of you that have followed Steve Quayle, there's the uh, story of um, world leaders meeting under the Vatican um, and a giant showing up. I don't know if I want to go into details right now. Let's just say that there was a sacrifice involved. And the one guy ran out, as did another guy. And um, they gave the story to Steve Quayle. Um, also, in uh, Dr. Ruckman's uh, church history tapes, he talks about one of the popes that was particularly um, uh, wicked. Um, he would frequently invoke the aid of the devil in... Uh, uh, um, you know, gambling and, and just all sorts of things. And I believe it was that same uh, title of the second book. Out of these two, Demonic Gospels and uh, uh, the Gnostic Origins of Roman Catholicism. Those are both by Ken Johnson, and I believe they're only available on Amazon. Um, you can also check out his website, biblefacts.org. Um, I believe it was the same Pope that said, um, to lie, uh, to lie carnally with, uh, um, I think women or with boys was the direct quotation, is no more a sin than rubbing one's hands together. You're welcome, Jeremy. Um... And I didn't add our link. Hang on, I do have to add that. Can't believe it. All sorts of things that I miss. I've really got to get a handle on this. I see a Jeremy message me. I'll have to get a hold of that probably after the stream. Or maybe I'll get it in the end. We got 52 minutes left. So I'm going to add card carrying Christians dot com slash lost books all right so i did add that link to the description underneath the and all of that word link so that'll be there for you guys <clears throat> All right, and um, so yeah, there was a lot, especially in the Dark Ages, going on inside 
the Vatican. And then you have the, um, oh, what was that ceremony called? Were they, um, they set a prostitute on the altar and stuff like that. I think that was more recently, too. Anyways. Um, and then they're uh, calling Mary Lucifer now. And uh, I'm pretty sure witchcraft and uh, everything has always identified Lucifer as being female, um, along with the planet Venus as the morning star. Be careful what Bible you use in Isaiah 14. Morning star, son of the dawn. So, yeah, and the logic behind that is warped. Anyways, we can talk about that another time. Um, and then the last, I guess, the last couple of things I can mention. Um, I, I want to read the one book that I got. It's huge. It's called The Occult Renaissance Church of Rome. Um, I will get into that at some point. There's a lot. I, I, I tell you what, guys. If, if this channel tanks, if I'm just like, I give up, there's no way this is happening. It will not be because there is a lack of content to cover. It will be due to things either I can't deal with or my own uh, shortcomings or something like this. It's not going to be because there's no potential for this channel as far as content to cover. By no means. Um... Yep, both male and female. Yep. And you would know. Sorry, Albert, I can't stop thinking about the stories you told me. Um, and then, um, Bill Schneblin. He mentions in his, um, I think it's in his book, Lucifer Dethroned. I should, have, I should have just thought of every book I could possibly mention and throw it in the description. Maybe I will at some point. But if you guys do click the links, you know, it ends up giving you, you know, whatever, 24-hour cookies and whatever purchases you make, we make a small commission on it, so... King James, I've got to edit that, um, in Bill Schneblin's, um, book, Lucifer Dethroned, which is his, uh, testimony of how he escaped the occult, um, it's a fantastic story, I highly recommend that you guys pick it up, and also that you guys watch his videos on YouTube. Um, there's also, I believe it's called, uh, William Schneblin, I think is the, uh, the title of his, uh, YouTube channel. You guys can also subscribe to that. I do not subscribe to his use of the face, Pharise uh, Pharisaical calendar. I don't subscribe to that. And I also do not subscribe to his, um, Hebrew rootsishness, which he is, uh, kind of part of, um, in reference to why, I believe we have a page about that called the cardcarryingchristians.com slash Hebrew Roots. I think that's a page. If it's not, I'll have to make one. Uh, but you can also see Ken Johnson's book called uh, The Ancient Roots of the Hebrew Roots Movement or The Ancient Origins. The Ancient Origins of the Hebrew Roots Movement. About that and how uh, really Christians were very pro-Israel, but they were not Hebrew Roots. And um, how they actually ended up uh, casting out a lot of Gnostics that were working their way in among them that were Hebrew roots and insisted that you call a God by his real name. And you know, you know the stuff. Um, so I will at least add the names of the books.
No, I'm not. This isn't going to take too long to type. we got to get down to business. Computer. All right. Um, in Bill Schneblin's book, he mentions that, and he was part of a, a vampiric cult at this point, he said that um, that his teachers in this cult told him that the reason why uh, the Roman Catholic so disturbing the reason why the Roman Catholic altar is so big and kind of sort of shaped a little bit like a coffin is because apparently uh, there was not only a Roman Catholic priest on the outside, uh, there was a Nosferatu priest on the inside of the coffin when they would do Mass. I don't know if that's still a thing or not. If it is, I would never want to go to a Roman Catholic church. In my, in my estimation, Roman Catholicism is just about as it is is a is a is a Christianity that has fallen into uh, idolatry and uh, keeps all of the uh, biblical trappings that it can. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, Popes to invoke the aid of the devil. We talked about that. Gnostic origins of Roman Catholicism. We got that. Book. The Nosferatic cult in the Eucharist. Think about that, really. You're, drink, you're, you're having all these people drinking Christ's blood. And the priest is standing up there and he's like, I'm going to say a magic spell, and then it's going to really be Jesus' blood. Yikes. And uh, we're supposed to be Christians and not vampires. Interesting. Um, it's also interesting to note that when Bill Schnevelin was a vampire, and after he underwent the change, all he could eat was the uh, Roman Catholic Mass and uh, blood. That's also disturbing. So, that's probably enough for um, uh, Black Magic and the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, let's see. What about the Lost Books? Well... They aren't exactly lost, but, I mean, there were a lot of them that were probably misplaced, but it's not like they were supposed to be in the canon to begin with. We'll get into that. What does the occult believe about the lost books? Well, they like a lot of them. I'm not sure that they necessarily subscribe to all of them. I'm sure they have plenty that we don't even talk about. But when somebody says, uh, oh, yeah, the Catholic Church, you know, they left out books from the Bible. You know, there's the gospel of this and the gospel of that and the gospel of Chuck Norris and just all these other different things that were kicked out of the Bible. You can, you can know for absolutely guaranteed that they have no idea what they're talking about. Um, but the occult, they like a lot of them, especially ones like uh, the Gospel of Judas, because Judas is supposed to have been the founder of black wizardry. Um, in Bill's book, which is right here, um, plus Lucifer dethroned. He actually has a list in the back somewhere. I might have to go through it all at some point with you guys just to um, 
help raise awareness, especially of uh, days when you should, you know, maybe stick a little closer to your kids or your pets and stuff like that. Um, especially if you live in an area. Anyways, in the back of this book someplace, I'm not seeing it. It's not, it's not being forthcoming for me right now. Um, anyways, he has a, uh, a list of where, of how the, uh, the, um, the occult feels, the, uh, the 12 apostles started different things like, uh, Eastern mysticism, Eastern mysticism for, uh, say it was started by, you know, Timothy or, I don't know, different things like that. And Judas is listed as being the, uh, the founder of black magic and uh, Satanism. Um, and I'll talk about the connections that I see there and um, what I think actually happened and things um, after the disciples went to these different places. Of course, they're going to be followed by the darkness. And once that person is dies or is killed by persecution or whatever like that, when the Christianity starts springing up around where they left off, then, oh, they started, you know, Christianity in this area. Oh, they started, you know, this and that in this area. And um, the people that are there at that point in time are going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he was our he was our leader. And then that's going to come into history. And that's how they're going to think of it. And then they're going to be like, oh, yeah, he started uh, uh, Indian, uh, 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 Indian witchcraft and, uh, you know, Native American paganism and stuff like this was started by so-and-so. And I personally think it's because some of the disciples may have come across to America. We'll talk about that at some point. So if you're interested in watching more of this kind of stuff and learning some very interesting things, subscribe, turn the notifications to all, and that'll help you guys stay updated with these things. Uh, let's see... But they do like things like the Gospel of Judas, especially because he's their founder. And in that one, they identify that Jesus laughs at his disciples about how stupid they are and they don't understand the truth and stuff like this. And But somebody does and uh, calls him out as being from an alternate dimension of some kind, some realm ruled by, I forget what the thing's name was, but it was basically like an androgynous kind of devil thing, and he's like, ah, you know where, where I'm from, and so like, so it's like, boy, uh, it's a, it's a creepy book, it's not, it's not just, you know, oh, you know, Judas took the place of Christ, and, you know, Christ ran off after, you know, falling unconscious or something, it's, it's not all just that. Um, you guys can check out some more of that kind of stuff on our website, Card Carrying Christians as one word dot com slash lost books. Okay, were their books banned from the Bible? No. And as you guys read and listen to the different things that are on that page. There are a couple of books there for your reading pleasure, and there's some more books that are referenced, and there's some audios and some videos and stuff like that. And you'll learn that there were two canons for the Old Testament. The first canon was, this is God's word, this is inspired. And then there was the second canon where it was like, you know, if you want to learn some stuff about our religion, then you can read these books too, because these are good historical kind of references. These are, you know, recommended reading. They aren't considered part of the first canon, but, um, and apparently, this is what I've heard, the uh, Apocrypha was not even considered scripture by anybody until the time of Martin Luther, where the Protestants just wanted to not use the Apocrypha at all. But the Catholic Church was like, uh, no, we're going to use the Apocrypha, and uh, we are going to declare it canonical. And now it's the inspired word of God, because we say so. And if you don't have it in your Bible, then you're going to hell, and all this other stuff, and you have a heretical Bible. So we're going to burn it with you, with, burn you with it around your neck, things like that. <clears throat> so that's how the Apocrypha became part of the Bible. 
the uh, King James Bible, of course, put it in between the Testaments, which was the traditional way of doing it for Christianity and things like that, um, because it wasn't considered scripture. It was there for recommended reading. It was there kind of like Bible maps or concordances. Um, an unnecessary part of the Bible, the Deuterocanonical, the second canon. That's why Deuteronomy is called Deuteronomy because it's called, it's the, uh, the second giving of the law. The first time it was given would have been in um, um, Exodus, Leviticus. Um, let's see. Was there an Alexandrian canon? To the information that I have, no. Um, some people have said that there was a, a, sec a second canon for Alexandria. Um, I think probably more in regards to the Old Testament, but apparently that's not a thing. Um, if you guys have more information on that, I would love to hear about it. Um, Alexandria, though. Very interesting place. We'll have, to, we'll have to do a whole video on that at some point. What is the secondary canon? We already talked about that. What is the pseudepigrapha? The pseudepigrapha are books that are attributed to somebody that didn't actually write them. So say there was a word or, uh, uh, or letter as from us, remember with uh, uh, Paul? And uh, I didn't write that. Somebody wrote that in my name. And uh, I would never say something like that. So something like that is a uh, pseudepigrapha, where somebody is pseudo, a false, pseudo, pigrapha, the grapha, it's false, basically false writings is what it means. Um, so like the apocalypse of Peter and things like that. <clears throat> those would be considered pseudepigrapha, and most of those to my understanding anyways, were written hundreds of years after said apostle died in most cases, like um, like Judas and uh, the Peter ones and different ones like that. They all have different dates when they were written much later. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the apostles, and we have, their, we have their writings, we have their sermons, a lot of them, and uh, a lot of their students' writings and sermons and uh, they always were like totally against these other gospels and they're just like no those are written by gnostics those those are and and they're completely contrary to everything that, that christ taught and uh, you know there 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 is no secret doctrine like these gnostics are claiming so that's basically what the pseudepigrapha is and um Ken Johnson gets more into that in his book, which I've already mentioned, called Demonic Gospels. Um, why would the Vatican hide lost books? In my opinion, because I would have an opinion on that, I would not be able to say why they would hide lost books, because I'm not them. There's probably several reasons. First, because they want to keep that kind of thing to themselves. Um, uh, probably because of the occultism that it carries, they would lose a lot of people from their, uh, from their church if it just came out, oh, hey, guess what, we're all Satanists, uh, um, a lot of the Jesuit stuff really is, really, really is, um, in regard to things like, you know, censoring things like the Dead Sea Scrolls and stuff like that, a lot of the time, I think it's because the information is so valuable to a Protestant Christianity, like in the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, that they just basically put all of the um, all of the barriers, all of the red tape in front of it, hoping that it's just a long time before it ever sees the light of day. You can see uh, things that I would think of as examples of that in uh, Ken Johnson's studies, um, where he talks about different Dead Sea Scrolls that are very, very, very messianic. And um, I'm not sure if some of that might also apply with the LXX, the Septuagint. I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that one out. <clears throat> Let's 
Um, did Constantine and Nicaea establish the canon? No. As a matter of fact, you'll get into the information on our website. I hope you do. Cardcarryingchristians.com slash lost books. That link is in the description. And the Council of Nicaea did not even address the issue of canon. Not even a little bit. So when somebody is like, oh yeah, Nicaea, that's where they, that's where the, that's where Constantine told us that these 27 books are the only ones you can read. And we're going to take all the other ones away from you because we're mean. And we don't think that those are going to help the Catholic Church be happy. And be able to start the Dark Ages. So we're taking away the, the satanic ones. Like, you know. Ay, ay, ay. Um, if anything, the Catholic Church during the Dark Ages would have loved those. So when you see a monk being dug up out of the ground, and he has such and such lost book with him or whatever, don't be surprised. It is not surprising. So to somebody that has a little bit of context and doesn't just think that, you know, and doesn't just think Christianity, oh, Catholicism. Um, so the reason why I think that, that this this that is a uh, the what what witches and uh, occultists and whatever else that's what they do teach among themselves is that these different books were taken from the Bible somehow, um, and and of course they are very uh, very forward in uh, the different books like you know or the different videos like banned from the Bible and whatever else that these books were Gnostics and oh. Why would they, these Gnostics love these books so much. Why would they take them out of the Bible? Mm. Well, there's a lot of good reasons that they would be taken out of the Bible, but they weren't. First of all, because the Bible is supposed to be inspired word, the inspired word of God. And when we have a whole bunch of books that are just, you know, contradicting it, it's like those aren't even an option. And it seems from the study I've done again that the canon was just completely decided upon. There were a lot of people that had, you know, different things that they didn't like. Like um, the Roman Catholic Church has never liked, what was it? Hebrews and then the Eastern Orthodox Church has never liked Revelation. I think that's how it is. Um things like that, and, uh, like, you know, are we going to include the Shepherd of Hermas, and are, are we going to include, you know, First and Second and Third John, and, you know, different things like that, but it was, it wasn't a debate of, is this going to go in the Bible, or are we not going to put it in the Bible, it was always a debate of, is, is this really what should be in the Bible, this one, because it was already there and it was already ready. It's a very interesting study if you guys want to get into it. Um, different resources that I've learned from, I've thrown on that page. Again, card carrying Christians as one word dot com slash lost books as one word. <clears throat> and the reason why it's so popular is because it just helps to. Uh, Tear on Roman Catholicism, which in most people's eyes is uh, 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 tearing on Christianity. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions about the lost books or anything like that, I will be glad to help with whatever I can. Just let me know. Um, you guys can message me on the Bible version conspiracy page on Facebook. You guys can leave a comment on this live stream even after it is not live. You can leave a comment below. You can leave a comment in the chat. I will see what I can do. Um, or you guys can message me, Joseph Armstrong, on uh, Facebook. Or you can email me at bibleversionconspiracy at gmail.com. Was Mrs. King James an occult? 
I really, really doubt it. Reason was, or reason is that I really, really doubt that is because, first of all, she was not in control of King James, to my knowledge. Um, King James loved her very much. Um, they had eight children together. And I think some of them died very young. Um, I would highly recommend that you go watch the video. The, um, what's it called again? The one by uh, Phil Stringer, <clears throat> which I don't think I put that down in the down in the comments. Like I said, I, I put it in the uh, in a post on the community tab on our channel. If you want to look it up on YouTube, though, and he, he does a, a very thorough job as well about his um, relationship with his wife and everything and. One of the reasons why um, a lot of people have accused him, it's called The Real Story of King James, Dr. Phil Stringer, posted years ago. It currently has 331 views. The reason why a lot of people uh, try to accuse King James of being a, a homosexual, a sodomite, a bugger is because he did not have concubines. He did not have designated money like every other royal in Europe to have a harem, to have mistresses. And it wasn't uncommon in that day for the wife of the king to live many miles away in another country what have you. Whereas Queen James, I guess you could call her, she lived there with him. And uh, that he it was it was the right way to have it. King James seemed to, throughout his whole life to be very concerned about what was right and what was wrong. Um, the thinking with my, you know, with my conspiracy brain, who knows? She could have been part of the cult, as uh, Dana said on the, uh, the one comment on the, um, uh, the secret history of the New King James. It could be. If she was... Did King James know? It doesn't seem like he would have. I would like to see uh, the evidence that she did, that she was part of the cult, which I'm guessing uh, would just mean, you know, part of the cabal or whatever not necessarily part of a cult there's some very interesting things that i could mention um what's his name zach king is a pseudonym he said that when he was in the oto he would uh he was he was paid a as a, um, uh, what was his title? I forget what his title was. But anyways, he looked like the rock and roll people from uh, Kiss. And uh, he would meet with presidents and senators and governors and kings and queens, he mentioned. Um, the OTO is a very, very powerful cult that is downright sick. <clears throat> um, and, I, and I'm sure everybody's heard the British Royals, um, uh, 
They're supposed to be reptilians or something like this. Um, Shape-shifting, uh, uh, raptor-looking aliens of some kind. And then you always have the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, which is where King James was from, was Scotland. But he didn't seem to be a Masonic. Um, I'm not sure what his connection with Masonic Lodges was, though, at that point. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are part of Masonry that just don't know <clears throat> about what's going on behind it. And um, to that point, I would definitely recommend checking out Bill Schneblin's stuff. Um, his one on the, uh, uh, the Shriners is very interesting. Carnival, uh, Carnival of Abominations, I think it's called. Um, Shriners, Shriners Carnival of Abominations. Um, was King James a closet Catholic? He, if he was a, if he was a closet, yeah, if he was a closet Catholic, he would have had to have been very closet because he was very uh, outspoken against um against romanism and uh, just wasn't part of it at all i think stephen i think uh stephen coston does get into that i'm not positive um i'm pretty sure gail ripplinger does though and in, in, in on all of that word um the major concern though is whether or not he was a sodomite um, he openly and regularly condemned sodomy. He was constantly comparing it to, um, murder and witchcraft as being, uh, uh, the most abominable of sins. He told his son in, uh, the kingly gift, the Basilican Doran, which I think more or less means the gift of the king. Um, so like a gift from the king or a gift to the future king. Um, he said in there that there were, uh, uh, crimes that he was not to, uh, pardon. One of them was sodomy. <clears throat> um, nobody accused him of, uh, sodomy when he was alive. The guy who first did, I think his name was Anthony Weldon did so a year after King James's son died. And uh, nobody in his lifetime ever saw him engage in, engaging in any kind of uh, any kind of behavior that would have seemed questionable questionable on that point. Um, the uh, the preachers of his day cried, uh, allowed of um, the, the, the uh, Mary Queen of Scots was actually driven from Scotland by preachers who preached against her many adulteries. And uh, uh, King James was her son. And uh, there were many people that disagreed with James very strongly on a lot of different things. And uh, They uh, were always like, no, we we don't like his divine right of kings. We don't like this. We don't like that. But what we can't say about him is that he's immoral. He is, you know, and and the kings of Europe were very open about their sins, about all the different things that they did. They didn't hide anything. King James, I believe, didn't hide anything either. And uh, it is very apparent from his life, from his wife, from his writings. He is one of the most accomplished kings as far as uh, uh, writings go. Um, Phil Stringer said that um, King James has actually written more books than any other monarch in all of history. 
and his writings are becoming available there. Um, I, I think they're much more available now than they were 10 years ago. Um, so he was not a sodomite. Was King James a godly man? Yes. And he was identified as such. There were, there were no, um, Puritan preacher had a linguine spine like the people today. They uh, were not afraid to uh, call out the king for wickedness or queen or whoever. And one thing that they never did was do it to King James. <clears throat> it, I, I will say uh, Phil Stringer's video is worth the listen. Um, it's uh, 40, 44 minutes, I believe. Um, it's about how long it took me to get home from work today. So take a listen. You will, you will not regret listening to it. <clears throat> was King James a conspiracy theorist? You might say that he was. He attributed the uh, power of witches to devils. And um, I just recently downloaded the, um, well, I, I printed as PDF. The, uh, the, um, the, the demonology that he wrote. Barbara Aho has it on her uh, website, watch-unto-prayer.org. You guys can uh, see it there. You can also download it many different places online. I did not include a link. Um, you may find it fun to uh, read it with all the Vs being shaped like Us. I was not thrilled about that. So uh, the Barbara Aho one does at least have all of the uh, Vs, which helps me being able to read. And I can't imagine what it would sound like if I tried to have some kind of automatic software read the demonology, the, the demonology to me. And devil is spelled D-E-U-I-L. Um, anyways, we're getting close on our time here, and I do want to try to take some questions if you guys have any. Um, and I think he also talks about a lot of other things in that demonology. I'll I'll have to I'll have to listen to it for myself, but he talks a lot about a lot about a different um strange kind of things. That's for sure. I've listened to part of it. Bob, Barbara Ho did read some of it on her um on her uh, interviews. What did King James say about his wife? He admired her. She was the, uh, the uh, subject of many sonnets and poems that he wrote. Um, he grieved her death very heavily. And um, what was the guy's name? Richards, I think. I forget. Um, the, the major the major guy but behind asking King James about um uh, revising the Geneva and um, and such like because they didn't have a satisfactory version um I forget his name it wasn't Reed Richards that's Mr Fantastic of the Fantastic Four um I forget his name anyways He's, he was having a, an issue uh, with um, the vows of, uh, of the time. <clears throat> the official wedding vows included a part about the man uh, um, uh, saying uh, that with his body, uh, saying to his wife, with my body, I thee wed uh, um, and I thee worship or something like this. And... Um, He's like, I don't like that. It doesn't make any sense. We should only worship God and stuff like this. Well, in the Bible, um, yes, you are only supposed to worship God in that sense. But are you also only supposed to praise God? Yes, in a certain sense, you're only supposed to praise God. But in the Bible, it also has worship for kings as a different type of worship. It's, it's an honor and a praise that is for a man that you are understanding to be a man. Um, 
and you're not, you know, it, there's, there, there's a definite, a definite difference. So, uh, wedding, worshiping, honoring, uh, they kind of, you know, come together. And, um, so King James's response to, um, James Reynolds, was it James Reynolds? I forget. Maybe that's somebody, it's my friend on Facebook or something. I forget. <clears throat> and guys, the more time that we can spend on this channel, the better. I'm planning to uh, work on it more faithfully three days a week until I get my, um, my, uh, I guess, freelancing website figured out and, um, uh, card carrying Christians. I want to make that self-sustaining. Um, but I don't know if I can do all of that and this at the same time. I do want to keep up on this, and but I do want to keep up with the cards thing too. I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 a lot. I'm taking on a lot. So uh, please pray for me. And give me, a, you know, like I said, best two ways you can support us for free with prayers and shares. So. I appreciate learning, earn, earning your listening ears tonight. King James's response to, uh, I believe it was Mr. Reynolds. He was like, well, first of all, you're not married, so you don't know. Second, what did he say? He said it in a very... Uh, poetic way. Something like, and if you were married, then you would know that all of the uh, honor and worship that you could give her would be well bestowed. Something like that. <clears throat> so yeah. And also, by the way, um, Phil Stringer was ending his talk and he was telling us about um the people that promote the idea that King James was a sodomite. He said there's two basic groups of people that do. First group of people are the people that are homosexuals. Um, there's a book that I'd want to probably get at some point um, about that, where they claim that King James was a homosexual, that um, Abraham Lincoln was a homosexual, and they can prove it, and uh, Queen Victoria apparently uh, um, was a um, an adulteress because she said that her cab driver made her laugh one time. All the proof in the world, you know. Um, uh, David and Jonathan, in the same book, are also apparently homosexuals, and they even go as far as to accuse Jesus. So, like Phil Stringer said, you can guess the credibility that I give that book. And that's a major one a major book that is cited among Christians to tell us that King James was a sodomite. And he said the other group of people that are quick to tell you that King James was a sodomite are Christians, sorry, Christians who are bitter, who don't want to use the King James Bible and want you to get away from it, and want you to put down that lousy old translation, and uh, are, and, 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 you know, the, the kind of people that, you know, what I think of is, like, the people that where you can't even use King and James in the same sentence, and they just go crazy. There's something going on there, something wrong. Something very wrong going on there. 
So let me see if I can get into the live chat. I know we've covered a lot of different things tonight. Um, the basic connection that I wanted to uh, get for you guys is the connection between the uh, lost books and this um, accusation about Queen James. Because if she was in a cult or the cult or whatever, then she would have been all over lost books and stuff like that. And that is very closely associated with the Vatican and occultism. And of course, the Roman Catholic Church would want you to think that they give you that they gave you the canon on a silver platter because you can trust the church to give you what you need. And of course, trusting Catholics don't realize that even with just that statement, they're being set up for when they get, um, for when they get disillusioned with their church. It's going to be uh, stupendous, to say the least. And the idea is, and, and, and you know, oh, wow, you know, I didn't realize those books should have been part of the Bible. Oh, well, I'm going to grab onto them. And guess what? I'm a Satanist now. That's what um, Bill Schneblin did to one lady. He, um, she was a devout Roman Catholic, and he was able to turn her head with Satanism and uh, get her to sign her soul away to the devil with her own blood. Fairly quickly. The people at universities are also very easy targets for occultism because everything that they thought they knew is now suspended in midair and they're looking for answers desperately. Um, the same thing with the Mandela effect craze. People are seeing things that they don't understand, that they can't explain. Things are missing. Things are out of place. Things are changed. I think it's personally it's because something is being cast on them by either, you know, a witch or some kind of entity that we don't understand. But they exist. And they are grasping desperately because they don't know what's going on. They need to have something. They, they need to know something. And when you're seeing something that's unexplainable, crazy explanations start making a lot of sense. But it's very easy to get sucked into a, a, a cult mentality that way. Very easy. I think I've referred to uh, Catholics this way before, but the same thing with the French Revolution. They went from being Catholic to just completely crazy. And that was brought on by the cabal. Um, Catholics are basically microwavable Satanists. You can just pop them in the microwave and pretty soon they're ready. That's what happens when your faith stands on the wisdom of men and you have a radical dedication to a man with a title who claims to be Jesus Christ in the flesh and is not. There is so much more we could go into with the lost books off the top of my head. That's about all I can give you on that one. There's so much more that is still on the top of my head about Roman Catholicism and about King James that we can't really get into tonight. Um, again, I would like to encourage you guys to check out the links in the description. I'm going to see if I can get on this live stream real quick and check out the chats.
Well, it's only 11.30. Look at that. Not as bad as usual. We've been up very late before with this. The bags under my eyes are not getting any lighter. Yep, Black Magic was here before Judas. The Bible even talks about it. And I think I think Judas was supposed to be more the founder of Satanism on the list. But anyways, yeah, Black Magic has been around a lot longer than that. Um, I'd recommend uh, Ken Johnson's book on Fallen Angels for that. It's a short read, but it's got a lot of good information on it. Um, Book of Enoch, yes, and we'll have to do a we'll have to do a stream sometime on the Book of Enoch. Um, Ken Johnson actually uh, prints it with a, a a commentary kind of thing where he makes comments about it and stuff, and um, points out different pieces that he thinks has actually been added. The Book of Enoch actually says in it that um, it would be tampered with in the future, and I think there's a lot of elements that were added to it that shouldn't be there that were added by Gnostics or by um, pre-flood uh, people that actually worshipped Enoch as some sort of a god. Apparently that's one of the reasons why he was taken as well, um, in addition to being righteous. So, but we can get into that at some point. Um, Phil is a Facebook friend. I will have to see if I can send him a friend request at some point. So I know he's I know he's getting a little older, but maybe he'd want to be my friend. Friend request Phil Stringer. I'm not sure if he want to, he would want to be my friend though, because I started a group called Friends of Gail Ripplinger, and he wrote a book called Gail Ripplinger's Occult Connections. So he might not like me. I don't know. Um, what about his expertise on witchcraft? What about his expertise on witchcraft? Whose expertise on witchcraft? 2020 website. You must be a subscriber. I don't know. People who have expertise on witchcraft. I don't know if King James would have had an expertise on witchcraft that I really would have. But, I mean, he he knew plenty about it for his uh, demonology, for sure. But, I mean, a lot of these things were not, they were not, they were more common knowledge, you know. And he did a lot of reading. He was considered to be a scholar, a serious scholar, even as a teenager. You can read many languages. Um, be prayed up if you read lots of supernatural stuff. Well, I've been listening to a lot of supernatural stuff. And I will say that I don't pray near as much as I probably should be to be... Um, listening to all the stuff that I do, but I could be listening to a lot worse. I see notifications pop up once in a while for lots of things that I don't want to get involved with. So, but I tried to stay above water. As far as what I listen to, for sure. Jeremy, message me. Um, just read that Darwin's father was a Mason. Yep. And then Erasmus Darwin, I think, was his grandfather, who was more of the um, original evolution guy. And my perception of evolution is that it is a religion for the elites because it puts you on the top of the food chain. And um, they really like to push it. And there's a lot 
there's a lot behind that one that we can't get into. Um, in the minds of men, I would like to get that book before it's completely sold out. Sorry, that was meant for someone else, lol. That's okay. All right. Well, only five people and probably five people that already knew about these kind of things. Um, so don't be surprised if um, somebody cracks open an ancient jar someplace and finds, you know, something that the Jesuits put there 30 years ago. You know, documents can be faked so easily. Please, 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 please. Don't be gullible when it comes to documents. Just because somebody finds something underground doesn't mean it wasn't buried there. And it also doesn't mean that that paper, just because the paper is old. People, forgers, stuff like this, have, uh, have been making uh, fake, false documents by using old paper all the time. You really want to test the ink because the ink is made out of little compounds. Some of them in certain periods have been caught because, oh, this wasn't in this type of ink, this type of blue or whatever that is in this ink wasn't even invented until 100 years, until 200 years after this document is supposed to have been written. That means it could not have been written earlier than the invention of this ink. That is forensics. That is stuff that you can count on. Things like that. So I highly recommend to you that before you call something like Sinaiticus, the oldest Bible, that you check the ink first. And ask David W. Daniels as to why they haven't done that. Anyways. Have a good night, guys. I appreciate you guys listening. And for you guys have been very consistent. I appreciate this. Six people at five, six, four people all night back and forth between those numbers. I appreciate it. That puts us that puts us at a good spot, especially for such a late broadcast. And uh, FYI, the uh, Mandela effect, one that I did last time, the first part of it, 117 and the second one, 113 views. Um, and the one that I did on February 24th is 201. And yeah, we're doing pretty good. Have a good night.